the way the body looks at food. Your body looks at the food and it measures the components of the food. So we have the apple would be primarily glucose, sucrose. The, um, there would be some fiber in that apple and that's how the body measures it. It does not by any means measure that apple as a caloric substance. So you don't hear this very, very much at all, but the body has no measurement system for calories. So whenever you eat something, and this is why it makes me crazy in the fitness magazines, well, if you eat a Snickers and you go run for a mile, you'll burn those calories off. That's not the way the body looks at it. Fitness is for performance. And so you'll want to make sure that everything you do in fitness is for um, a performance issue. It's to make you stronger. It's to make you healthier. It's not very good for weight loss. So if you look at the amount of calories that some of your devices are giving you, or if you get on a bike, and it says, yay, you burned 300 calories. One, that's probably not true. Um, and two, here's the way the calories break down. Most of those calories, for all of you, are going to be from carbohydrates or sugar. And you never really get into the stored fuel that you're trying to get rid of. And so using calories as a way of measuring um, how to lose weight doesn't work because the body does not measure your food in terms of calories. It breaks it down in terms of the components of the food. So I know we're talking about fitness and it sounds like I'm talking about food a lot, but those two go together because we eat and then we work out so that we can lose weight. It doesn't work like that. So let's take the apple again. The apple is maybe a, an 80 calorie apple. Your body doesn't go ding, 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 there's 80 calories, let's move so that we can get rid of the 80 calories. The body looks at the apple and says, oh, there's 15 grams of carbohydrates. Ultimately, okay, we'll set up your one-on-one -on -one and go yep, over that. I will set that up, thanks. Okay, ultimately, your body looks at the sugar amount in that apple, and then it decides what to do with that sugar. And so when you look at doing cardiovascular work so that you can reduce your stored, let's say you pinch an inch on your belly and you want to get rid of 10 pounds of belly fat. That's a really big thing for women. We want to get rid of the belly fat. Well, what happens is you, we, we collectively as a society think that we need to go run or get on a bike or do whatever we need to do and that that 300 calories is going to somehow get that belly fat off of us and that's not the way it works. Our body mobilizes fat, okay, so whatever you pinch, mobilizes fat for fuel through a biological, uh, a chemical process. And it rarely does it have to do with how many miles you put in today or how many calories you burn doing your exercise. If I can get you all away from that, it would be a great day, you would lose weight better, and the world would be a healthier place. So, whatever the caloric intake is on the food, you don't burn it off. Whatever calories your device tells you that you used that day in your fitness routine, doesn't matter to the stored fuel that you have stored. Okay, it doesn't matter, we won't mobilize it. So, what do we do? All right, your cardiovascular workout should be to benefit your cardiorespiratory system. And so we use target heart rate zones. So if I were you, I would do two days a week of what's called zone four, zone five work. And I'm going to give you a worksheet at the end of our 14 days so that we can go over that together. That's going to be on our last class in the implementation phase. So I'm going to give you that worksheet and you're going to figure out your heart rate zones. Then you're going to use your appropriate devices to two days a week work on your cardiorespiratory system. You want your pump and your lungs 
to be completely healthy. But it doesn't take miles and miles and miles of cardio. As a matter of fact, according to the leading um, you know, exercise physiologists and heart doctors, we're doing too much of steady state cardio. So heart rate training zones are going to be the best way to know if your walking is doing it for you, or if your running is doing it for you, or if your biking is doing it for you, or maybe you're a rower. All right, heart rate training zones. And I'm going to give you the worksheet during our last class that we do on Zoom, and we're going to figure that out together. Now that we've talked about it, how do we implement? That's that class. Okay, the second piece of the fitness that you need to know is every year women are losing muscle tissue. It's called sarcopenia. And after the age of 75, like one out of four women will fall, and 25% of those falls will lead to death um, because we fell on our left side. So my goal as a fitness trainer and as a coach is to help you avoid that. You've got to be working your muscle tissue at least two days a week. At least two days a week, we have to be moving the muscle tissue in a certain way so that you don't lose it, you don't fall, you don't have a major injury. So how do we do that? Well, one of the best ways and easiest approaches is to overload your muscle tissue. So for instance, full body push-ups would be a great way of overloading a lot of your muscle tissue. Um, if you could do push-ups two days a week, full body, you would create an overload that would give you strength training. So the whole goal is to prevent sarcopenia. So our goal cardiovascularly was to improve our, um, and I'm going to give you some techniques on this by the way, our whole goal of the cardio work is to improve our cardiorespiratory system, not to lose fat. As a matter of fact, when you do cardio work, most of you lean into that carbohydrate usage for fuel and therefore your body doesn't mobilize fat and it totally contradicts what you want to do which is lose the stored fat that you've put on. Strength training on the other hand can help stimulate the hormones that will allow you to use fat for fuel and that is a great thing. So you want to do overload you want to overload your muscles so that you don't lose it. So the old adage of if you don't move it, you lose it is so true. And you want to make sure that you are overloading those muscles so that you don't lose them and they will in turn help you to mobilize fat for fuel for sure. So now cardio work, strength training. And I'm going to give you some tips on the strength training in our implementation class so you can decide what to put in your calendar for your workouts. So you'll want to have two days a week where you're doing 20 to no more than 40 minutes of cardio. And you'll want to do it based on your heart rate training zones. And one way to know if you're overtraining is take your resting heart rate on a day when right when you get up and in 12 to 24 weeks take it again if it goes down or if it's under 60 65 you know that you've probably trained your resting heart rate, your cardiovascular system well if your resting heart rate never goes down you're probably not leaning into the right program now the strength training you can measure that on a weekly basis. Am I getting stronger? Um, do I have better range of motion? Do I feel like my performance is going up? So that you can you can measure that along the way. So I'm going to give you both a game plan for your cardio, which is your heart rate training zones, and then I'm going to give you some examples of seven exercises that you can do to work on building beginning level strength and that will be in our implementation class. Now, um, the, the thing that I hope that you walk away with is, all right, so I'm doing two cardios, I'm doing a couple of strength trainings, what do I do with all this other time I used to be you know, running or biking or rowing? 
Well, it's called NEAT, N-E-A-T, Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. Big, long, fancy word for you doing things that are your everyday activity. So, Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis, okay? Come on in, friend. I'll be done in just a minute. You, you can here or there, wherever you'd like to be. Non-exercise aerobic thermogenesis. Neat. Thou, that is your daily activity. We sit too much, friends. We sit too much. And so I want you to think about where can you walk, hike, ride a bike for fun, not for exercise, just for fun, walk to the store. I want to see where can you improve, like if you had a day job and you were sitting all day, here's what you do. If you, you set your watch timer, you set your phone timer, and every 15 minutes you stand up and sit down. You do 10 squats. That's neat. That's non-exercise uh, activity thermogenesis. That means that you are firing up your body's ability to use fuel both from sugar that you've stored and from uh, fat that you've stored. So non-exercise activity thermogenesis, that's what you want to lean into. You do a lot of that. So my clients, we set a step goal together. I don't ever get to superimpose what I want them to do. It has to be what they want to do. So sometimes it's 3,000 steps, sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 15. My step goal, including my fitness, is 15,000 steps a day. So I encourage my clients to set it wherever they're at and work up to 10,000 steps a day. Yes, it's just a number pulled out of the hat, but guess what? It equals about five miles of walking, and that's a wonderful, beautiful thing. So, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It's your activity that you need to be doing. So like right now on the weekend, I get together with our run club and I bike today, some ran, some. So it was my activity for today. On Monday, I will get on a spin bike and I will do cardiovascular work and I press and lean into it. And that's where I use my heart rate training zone and I go after it with Tabata work. And I'll, I can explain that later if you want. But I hit it hard on Monday. And I also do strength training on Monday. And then the rest of Monday, I go walk. I put in about five miles of walking in between my working. And that's the way I calendar it in. So we've got to wrap it up here. You cannot use exercise to burn body fat. You can use it to burn up sugar. Some of you are lucky enough that that exercise helps your body mobilize fat to be used at a later time. So there's never a 100 to 100 in terms of exercise and food you eat. It does not work like that. Your body does not measure calories. Your body measures carbs, protein, fat, ketones, water. That's what it measures. So when you eat an apple, it's a measurement of sugar, fiber. Uh, and your body measures, uh, it, it doesn't measure fiber, but it uses fiber. All right, you have cardiovascular activity because you're trying to improve your cardiorespiratory system. That's a dedicated effort towards something. Heart rate training zone is one of the best ways to get that done. Your body has muscle tissue that you don't want to lose. Load and repetition is the way to keep your body from uh, having that deterioration go on, that sarcopenia, and I'm going to give you an implementation plan on both load and cardio so that you can put it into your calendar and get that done. Strength training can be done two days a week because, let me tell you this, I know I'm rambling on here, but it's so important for you. Your recovery in your strength training is just as important as the actual work. Your recovery is just as important as the actual work. So I recommend to my clients two, maybe three days of strength training. That's it. I recommend two hard days of heart work 
and then I recommend tons of neat non-exercise activity thermogenesis. I recommend a lot of that. We hike together, we bike together, we walk together, we do Pilates together. We do a lot of non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So those are the three components of fitness that I want you to take and hold on to. And I want you to probably forget about everything you've been taught about fitness. Toss it out the window. And when you go to the gym, I want you to take the principles. I, I, I get that gym thing, right? I get the outdoor thing. I get a lot of it. That's great. But I want you to know why you do it. So Monday night, October 4th, Monday night, we have a Zoom class. And I'm going to give you the tools to implement what I just taught you today. Your cardio, your strength training, and your NEAT. And that is how you are going to, uh, that's how you're going to use activity to help your body mobilize stored fat that you put on and you want to use it for fuel. And I'm going to teach you some simple tips that you can use to get that done. Then, when we talk about your, um, oh wait, not, not this Monday, I'm sorry, October 4th, the following Monday. Then I'm going to teach you about food and the number one reason that you stored all this fat that you don't want. I'm going to teach you the number one reason that you stored all the fat that you don't want and how you can get rid of it. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope something landed. I hope that it changes your paradigm because that's what's going to be needed for you to lose 20 and 50 pounds. You can do it. And I know the tips I'm going to give you are going to allow you to change that paradigm. Dieting is a futile attempt to, to get rid of fat that you've stored. Exercise is a futile attempt for you to get rid of stored fat that you, that you got. So are you with me? Comment below. Give me a thumbs up or a heart. Let me know that something that I talked about today landed. If you're doing this on the replay, skip the first 10 minutes. Um, we had someone late for their body comp, but I still wanted to do it, and so we were discombobulated. Just go forward 10 minutes and um, then start the show because this stuff I gave you today is a reason for you to ditch everything that you've ever been taught about food and fitness. Get rid of it. I'm going to give you the real story. I'm, I can back it up with science, and it is the way for you to do what you want to do. Hey, Marie, get down and do those push-up, girls. Oh, yeah. Kathy Pierce, Marie Stagg, show me some of those push-ups. All right, gang, I'm going to sign off. I have some more mo uh, body comps. Monica, if you want to catch up and get in on this story, uh, we've been doing a 14-day weight loss challenge. It's been great. Robin, thank you. I know you got on when I was discombobulated. Um, just You got all the right detail. And catch the next classes. I'm going to give you the tools that you need. Remember, it's all about tool set. Do you have the right tool? Then it's all about, can I use those tools? And then it's all about the mindset. Will I do the work? All right, bye. See y'all later.